this part of kind of the online right today is making the argument that number one, kind of men are oppressed, and then kind of number two, that marriage is an obstacle for men flourishing. Kind of this is how he talks about marriage. He says, quote, this. The problem is there is zero advantage to marriage in the Western world for a man, unquote. Yes, education, work, and money matter, but that marriage outpaces, simply nothing compares to a good marriage and predicting happiness for ordinary Americans. The odds of being very happy, to be more precise, with life increased by 545% for those who are in a good marriage. And so it's these ties, not the priorities associated with the Midas mindset, that are most conducive to our happiness today in America. So Scott is struggling with a mix, a toxic mix of loneliness meaninglessness and sadness. And I want to acknowledge, of course, there are many American adults who are single and flourishing. They're doing just fine. We heard about one, obviously, in Bloomberg. But there are also many more Scots out there today as the ranks of singles continue to mount in, in this country. And the bad news this morning is that too many men and women are not able to kind of find their way to the altar. They're not able to kind of enjoy the meaning and direction and solidarity afforded by marriage. We often hear in the culture, you know, in the media and online, for instance, that we should be kind of taking a me-first approach to marriage, where we're kind of privileging our own autonomy. But as I've talked to ordinary couples across the United States, I got a different idea about marriage and money. The couples who are pooling money are about, you know, 20 percentage points more like I said, they're very happy in their marriage and almost 20 percentage points, more like I said, that they're not kind of considering um, divorce. It's that Americans who kind of take the classic view that any kind of infidelity is always wrong here in yellow are more likely to be happy in their marriage compared to Americans who don't subscribe to that classic understanding of fidelity. It's that people who attend church together are almost 20 percentage points more likely to be very happy in their marriages. Couples who regularly attend church have more sex than their secular peers, kind of surprising given what the culture says to us, that the family first values, virtues, and social networks supplied by religion typically strengthen and stabilize marriage in America today. The challenge then facing us this morning is to revive a kind of marriage mindset for the 21st century in our schools, in our colleges, on social media, in our churches, and our homes. In other words, you and I have to build a culture centered around the most important thing, which of course is not gold, but love.